and gentlemen, we'd now like to invite uh, Gianni, who we heard from earlier on, uh, Hannah and Haley, uh, our BBC apprentices, and Jake back up onto the stage, who I think has been out doing an interview on the radio since your talk, but I hope you're back. Um, I'd also like to introduce to you and welcome Richard Baker. Uh, Richard's an entrepreneur who founded Sequence, uh, a digital company based in Cardiff, uh, when he was just in his early 20s. Uh, they're going to be part of our panel discussion now on perception. So would you give our panel uh, a big round of applause, please? Thank you very much. And uh, I'm hoping we've got our second microphone here. Ladies and gentlemen, um, this is an, an opportunity for you to chip in as well, so don't feel that you've just got to sit there and, uh, and be entertained. If you've got thoughts that you want to bring in, uh, it's the usual convention for question time. It's probably easier if you stand up or put your hand up uh, and tell us who you are, your question, and we'll run over uh, with a microphone so we can bring you in as well. Um, let me just uh, advise panellists that those microphones in front of you uh, have to be shared round so if you can uh, grab them now and get them off the table but pass them round to each person uh, as they speak um, one of the things that's really struck me this morning ladies and gentlemen is um, what schools are providing in terms of uh, the curriculum and that's come over time and again that perhaps what's being provided in schools um, isn't fit for purpose in the in the 21st century so I wonder if perhaps we should start first of all with asking the panelists um, what you needed more of in school and whether or not school gave you what you needed. Gianni, let me start with you. Um, it's so long ago since you were in school. Yeah, um, well, I think with school, there needs to be more focus on, on why we're learning what we're learning. Um, I think it's very much about what we're learning. So it's very, especially with ICT, it's very, we're learning this software, we're learning this uh, piece of the internet, or learning about this part of the computer, which is all well and good, but I think we need to know why we're learning it. So you're learning about Excel so that you can go and do so forth later on and create so forth later on. You know, publisher, me learning about publisher in school was so boring, but it's because I didn't appreciate what publisher could do. And I think that that's got to be the, the thinking, that ICT needs to be more about why we're learning about ICT, why is it in the curriculum, what is the importance of it, as opposed to just straight kind of, you know, learn X, Y, Z. Okay, um, Hannah, um, our, one of our BBC apprentices, what are, what are your thoughts? I mean, you're in this world now of trying to fix Doctor Who and things like that. I mean, how well did school tool you up for what you're now doing? In all honesty, I didn't really provide any of the knowledge that I have today. In school, it was the bare basics. It was use this to make a PowerPoint, use this to make a spreadsheet. Like, we weren't actually taught why we were doing the things that we were doing, and the majority of it just seemed to be common sense. There was no creative place for what we were learning. It was all just practical then and there, not the capabilities of what we could actually do with it, such as like Photoshop and Adobe Audition. And it didn't show us, like I said, the capabilities of the product that we were using. It just showed us the immediate effects. And Hayley, what, what about you? What, what were your experiences? Um, I'd say they're pretty similar, to be honest. But I think we have to give teachers and schools a lot more credit at the same time as well. Because yeah, this, this isn't a session to criticise schools or teachers. It, 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 it really isn't. It's just about being very honest about where yeah. we are and where we need to be. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's all about giving children an insight, young people an insight about what they'd like to take a little bit further. So obviously if they do enjoy spreadsheets and they take joy in spreadsheets, then that's, that's fine. But maybe a little bit more of variety as well with coding and an in-depth perspective of other, other programs. Okay, I mean, Jake, we're just listening from you earlier on, uh, and you're obviously an ICT genius and, and all the rest of it. I mean, you know, may, maybe uh, school isn't the most important role here. This is about the individual taking responsibility for their own education. School has got a part to play in this, but if you're interested, you shouldn't, you shouldn't just like follow the, like, the steps school gives you. It's not a linear thing. If school gives you like a... a like a key set, looking from basic to intermediate, and you want to go off on a tangent and learn about um, the pros and cons of hard drives versus um, solid state drives, you do that. Schools won't teach you that, but if you want to learn about it, you can, there's nothing stopping you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let, let's just bring in Richard for, uh, for a moment. Hello. 
Um, for me, I think um, school is clearly part of the answer, but it's also part of the problem. At the end of the day, if you want to get ahead in this world, you've got to get your ass and do it yourself. Um, and that's something Jake has done, that's something you've done, that's something you've done. And I think everyone has made their own destiny to some point. Um, and I think we cannot rely too much on the education system for um, doing that for us. Um, however, it is clear that the skills that students we're seeing coming into our business have out of school is only probably 20% of what we need. The remaining 80% is down to us or that individual to do themselves. James. Sorry, yeah, I just, um, I know it looked like I gate crashed the stage that uh, I was originally on, on, on to view on here, but I just thought I'd kind of share at school in, in assembly, it was when I was eight or nine, a teacher said, you know, your parents' generation is a job for life, and in your generation you will do 12 to 14 different jobs, and half the jobs you're going to do do not exist today. And I think it's just really, really powerful in just thinking about you know, what we're preparing people for. And again, like Gianni said, that questioning and why, but the transferable skills, and you were talking about troubleshooting, teaching people how to deal with the problem, not teaching people the answers, but teaching people the process. Uh, and I just thought that was important to add. But I, I want to ask the employers here, um, the, th the three of you principally, what do you make of the raw material coming through your door from school, from, from education? Um, for me personally, it's extremely challenging. That's partly why I'm, I'm so pleased to be here today to hopefully help inform and really challenge the education system, what's going on, because the number of people that sit in an interview and do not have the transferable skills, do not have the things that they need um, to really add value. Um, and this, this confidence and arrogance line, you know, we're in a global society and global economy that, you know, our competition in other countries are, are leap bounding kind of what we're doing. And, it, and you know, we need to look up. Um, and, and engage people. Yeah. Just, to, just to add to that, I think um, a key part is it's not just the hard skills, it's the soft skills, it's the altruistic stuff, it's the aptitude, it's the willingness to learn and try new things and stand up and speak and do different stuff. So whilst the hard skills of you know, computer science or whatever it is we're looking for, that's important. It's equally important to make sure that people have the willingness to push themselves and do different things. Um, I, I want to talk about um, apprenticeships because a lot of you in my wanderings around tables, and I know Maggie will back me up on this as well, have talked about apprenticeships. Um, I want to ask the employers and then our, our, our younger people uh, about apprentices, uh, apprenticeships specifically. Um, Richard, um, what are you doing about apprenticeships and bringing people on? Um, to be honest, it's something we've really just got to do ourselves. Um, we recognise as a business that there is not enough talent out there um, just approaching us and knocking on the door. So we have to get off our asses and do something about it ourselves. Um, so we take on students. Um, typically, people approach us. So typically, people get in touch through contacts, through networks. So let me... Um, so, uh, right, this is one of the things that came on the table. How do I get an apprenticeship? So basically, you don't advertise. So if any of these guys over here want to come and work for you, they haven't got a cat in hell's chance of seeing it in a newspaper or on a website. You wait for them to come to you. Typically, they get in touch. We probably get one or two inquiries a day from people who want to do work experience or work placements with us. And we recognise that's a critical part for our business, so we invest in that. And we take people on regularly to do that. That's how Jake came to us. He got in touch with us, we recognised a bit of talent in him, a little spark in his eye perhaps, and here he is. So it's, it's, we have to do that off our own back. It's something we recognise is critical for the success and ongoing sustainability of my business. Uh, Hannah, how did you find this BBC apprenticeship? I found it a very interesting experience. because. How did you actually find out about um, it? Um, I found it through Careers Wales through a website on there. It was like a little link on the side. They, were, it, they are quite difficult to find in my experience of looking. Not many places advertise them. It just seems to be a few specific sites. But you've got to do a lot of digging around. And when you were digging, when you were looking for places, um, let, let me move on to Hayley. Um, did you, were you contacting companies directly and saying, I'm Hayley, I'm brilliant, give me an apprenticeship? <laughs> Um, I was keeping an, out, uh, an eye out on Twitter. I was starting to follow different companies and different schemes, like Creative Skillset, to a partnership with Covlair, and um, that's when I found out about the apprenticeship. Gianni, what are you, what are you doing in terms of apprenticeships? Are, are you a good company? Are you going out finding people? Are you accessible? Um, we are always welcome to take people on, but I don't actually go out and find anyone. Um, and, and, and I tell you why. It's just because I like people that can 
We always want people that can get up and do stuff themselves. We want people that can solve a problem themselves. And I think you having to get to me and you having to find out where I am and you actually making the way down is kind of like a filter process for us. That already says you're our kind of person. You're the kind of person that although you couldn't find it easily, you solved the problem. And, and that's kind of the best thing for us. So it kind of, it kind of works for us. I, I mean, this is what's worth raising. I think on that far table there, someone said, how do I go and get the apprenticeships? I mean, basically, you'd never get to work for this guy unless you bother to go and track him down. But I mean, that, it's, a, it's a familiar story, isn't it? That there's no point waiting for the job ad in the local paper. It, it isn't going to happen. So th this is interesting stuff. Um, I, just, I want to ask all of you, um, because again, this is one of the things that, that's come up on the tables. Do you need university? Question mark. Rhetorical question. <laughs> Um, we've heard from a lot of speakers today, people who've come straight from school and had to get up and go to set up their own companies, haven't bothered with the university. Other people have gone to university. So I'm slightly confused because I don't know what the answer is to the question, do you need university? Um, uh, let me start, James, with you. Do you need university? Um. I, th I think, you know, there was a trend going, you have to, and, and, and I think people going maybe for the wrong reasons. And I just think it's not, um, you know, a, a, a set path that everyone needs to anymore, and it's about your own path, and it's about defining, you know, the word passions come up a lot. Follow what you enjoy doing, what you're passionate about, what you love to do. Um, and if you're not, you know, I traditionally would say I'm a very academic person. I find found, um, you know, exams kind of quite difficult. And I think that people, you know, should find their own journey, whether that be apprenticeships, whether that be work experience, and they're getting a, and a job, and it might suit them better. So I think we've been railroaded into this expectation, you have to go to university. I did, I'm very pleased I did, but I, I got then lots of other experiences, as I shared earlier, that has made me who I am, above and beyond, you know, the piece of paper at the end of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a grown man dodging the question completely, he hasn't answered it. Um, Jake, what about you? You're, I mean, you're about to go, I mean, are, are you going to go to university? Do you need to go to university? Yeah, I'm heading, hopefully heading to Coventry University in September. But do you need to go to university? Um, for me personally, I've got like a few different options. I could stay work in sequence, I could go to another company to get more experience, like I could try and find an apprenticeship. But out of all these options, to me, university is the most appealing. It, it, you want to spend three years larging it and getting drunk, is what yeah. you mean. Um, God, you got me. Never mind. Um, no, university for me, as it's not... Hang on. With IT, university, the Coventry course, the guys in sequence have pointed out to me saying the skills there are fantastic. It's the living alone, it's the life skills that... Like, like I'm 18, I still, live from, I still live with my dad, and he, he does a lot of stuff for me. By moving to university, I also gain the life skills alongside the degree. So now, when I go to a potential future employer, I, um, I have a, a two years work experience working for Sequence. I want a degree. I can easily live away from my parents. I've got the, the whole package. So for each individual person, it's like what piece of the puzzle will fit you? Like, university will fit me perfectly, because I know myself. You know what you lack in, and you know what you can like, make yourself a more rounded person with. Well, we're learning there isn't a right answer, perhaps, to this question. Um, Hannah, uh, what, is, what is the answer to the question, do you need university? Do you need the university to be a BBC apprentice? No. Uh, most apprentices actually ask that you don't have a university qualification, because it gives other people a chance. Obviously, they haven't been to university, that the people who have might overtake otherwise. But I think, necessarily, in today's economy that you don't really need to have a university to degree to do what you want to do. This obviously depends on what you want to do, but especially sure. in media, I think experience is more valued and real life experience is more valued than a piece of paper with a qualification on it. And Hayley, do you feel you've missed out? Will you feel that you've missed out? Well, you don't, you don't know, I guess, really. Um, no, I've already um, been to art college, so I've done a certain amount of higher education, but I, I haven't got um, a graduate degree. Um, but again, it tailors to the individual, whatever, whatever you feel is necessary for you is the next step you, you should definitely take. Okay, Gianni, a quick thought from you. When those CVs are coming across the desk, uh, are you making a decision that you're not hiring people because they haven't been to university? Um, uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I actually think university is good. 
Um, I think the big problem what I had with university is that you don't get taught the separation between going to university for the education and going to university for the experience. Now, I would argue that you don't go to university for the education. I don't think that's vital to having a job, but I think the experience at university is totally essential. Um, so ironically, I think we should all go to university if possible, just because of the things that I experienced there in terms of learning to meet completely new people. You know, that sort of thing. I hadn't, you know, you go to a school that's near your house, everything is very local to your world, but I went to uni with people that come from different parts and I learned so much skills that I now use in the workplace outside of my degree course. I think that's essential. Thank you very much. And Richard, I know I've cut you off without hearing from you, but I've got a flashing light on the lectern in front of me. It's now turned red, which means the lectern's about to explode. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for our panel, please. Thank you very much.